Hello and welcome back to this lesson number four and we will deal with classifying vector data today and um, we'll have a look at certain ways on how to differentiate and classify vectorial data. First of all we can somehow get some understanding for our data so not the classification but a differentiation by the name or by an attribute. So let's have a look on the places uh, feature set here and let's have a look into the attribute table. <clears throat> As you can see, there are certain attributes and there are some attributes that fit quite well to understand and differentiate one point from another. Of course, that is the name. First of all, every feature has here the attribute name. That's a plus. And the name is unique in this case. We also have and the category called place for every feature it is filled node is not very interesting for us to see but what about uh, the question how to get this name field on the map therefore we will use the labeling function in QGIS so right click or double click on places go here to labels so we have seen the symbology tab let's go to labels and from the beginning there are no labels shown shown so we would switch to single labels here now we can select the value that should be drawn we will select name and i think the the original setting is 10 uh, or value of 10 for the size so let's pre press on apply now you can see that there are some labels here not very good to see because they are way too small so let's increase this value to 20. click apply again and that's it for the start every point has now a label well if you would like to play around with the labels you should also make sure to have the label tool by enabled so go here to uh, right click on the, on the top and have a look on the label toolbar so this was the label toolbar you can switch it on again there we are so now you can easily see also the labeling uh, the the label um, properties on the right side but i like the bigger dialog much better so i will go here to places and let's work with that Albayan is, I think, the first entry here in this list. Not very common to use. So let's switch also this to a more commonly used uh, label font. And this looks much better now. Then there's, there's quite quite a problem here. So it depends on the, on the, on the vector setup you have. So which layers are shown. But you can see here by at Zwellendam we have also the buildings as part of the of the map the term Swellendam is not very easy to see therefore we will create somehow a text buffer around each character by choosing here to go to buffer and draw text buffer one millimeter should be fine so let's have a look here you can easily identify each label and it's much better to see you can still decrease this little value a little bit now it's better and also for 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 the for the coloring of labels you should not go with such a hard color like black a deep gray is easier to to read and to to perceive by your eyes so let's decrease this value to a darkish gray now there we are let's press on okay at the beginning we will also or we will also increase the the value of our symbology the size of our marker let's go with four 
You can now see that the label is normally drawn on the upper right corner of a point marker and you can also play around with the distance to this marker. So let's go on labels here and go on placement. You can see that there's something called a round point. That means that the labeling engine of QGIS will decide where to place the labels. Uh, you can have a look here on quadrant. There's nothing to see. You can also select to say, well, I would only like to have the labels on the right side. Go there. Now you can see that they are starting, that they are starting here on the right side of the marker and go along. You can also switch over back to the upper right corner and so on and on the on the marker itself. But we will go with the around point. Now it is set to two millimeters. Let's increase this to three millimeters. And now they are a little bit uh, or they slide it a little bit to the upper right corner. Let's press OK then. Sometimes labels, well, let's go with Svelendam. Svelendam is a, is a town. Let's have a look once again in the attribute table. Svelendam town. And there's another town called Buffels, Jax, Rivier. And towns should not be point features, right? A town is a polygonal, it's, it's an area. So why not skip the drawing of the marker for the places and only show the label? That's one way to deal with it. So let's go up once again here. In the written version, it is said to decrease the symbology size to zero. You can do this, of course. Let's apply this. Now the marker is gone, but I will not yeah, support this. Uh, I would go with, um, let's click on apply. I'll simply say, well, don't draw any symbols. That's it. Because otherwise, it will draw a symbol, decrease the size to zero, and we'll still have some, some sort of memory um, or some some symbol in the memory that it needs to keep track of right and that makes rendering a little bit harder so we'll go with no symbology the labels we will still stick to the label itself let's have a look here distance three around point well i don't like to have the label around the point because the the point coordinate is still some sort of geographical information and we would like to place it on the point so uh, we have already seen that offset value offset from point we will go with uh, directly on the point let's press on ok and here and now we have the labels directly sitting on the point where it was in the beginning sometimes labels can be a little bit longish so there are ways of formatting the data itself um, you can wrap it on a character like on that uh, blank so now the labels are here a bit long again but they are still hard to read in my opinion so I will stick with the longish labels and let's zoom out a little bit what happens now is that and that was described earlier once you zoom out, QGIS still tries to s tries to place all the labels that are available in that feature set, but it detects that there are labels that cannot be drawn. And then there is a function called this toggles display of unplaced labels. And let's switch this on. And now you can see all the unplaced labels due to uh, yeah due to some overlap with already existing labels, and that makes it easier for you to to produce a proper cartographic set so if that is a really important thing to you make sure to um, check for reddish labels here with this function and um, quite a tip don't use red labels then if you would like to highlight them no but that's it for the moment thank you very much again for watching take care and goodbye